And good ev evening, everyone. Welcome to the Macomb Dining Company. I guess uh, it, if you're old like me, you remember it being the Macomb Dining Company. Indeed. If you're young like the guy sitting beside me, Justice Keen, you remember it more maybe as Sports Corner. And it's been a couple things through the years, but now Sports Corner at 124, and the, the crew have ownership, and it's still as beautiful up here as it's ever been. Oh, it's a great building, and I mean, we got chandeliers on the wall up here. Gorgeous place to have tonight's event, and boy... It's a big night across the state of Illinois. Yeah, it's a huge night. This is, if if you're five or four or better in IHSA, or, and for that matter, an eight-man football too, this is the night that you play for, that you work for all season long. It's playoff announcement night, and we're here in Macomb to find out where the 9-0 and Bombers will play. Likely, it will be at home. Yep. Uh, likely, there'll be a top-tier seed. They may not be a top seed, but they should be towards the top at 9-0. and 3A, 4A, I think probably 4A it sounds like. I don't that, know if that's I, official, I, but I'm pretty sure that it, it'll be close, but we'll see. Yeah, at the we'll, very see, end we'll of the day. see where it works out, but it sounds like they'll probably be 4A. So we're here for the Macomb Bombers playoff party. I'm Dwayne Hewlett. Justice Keem from the Bombers Sport Network is with us tonight. And, and Justice, I mean, I think that when people looked at this schedule for the Bombers and they looked at the team the Bombers were bringing, People thought, you know, this is a chance for the Bombers to make some noise. I still don't know if everybody thought that they would actually run the table. No, and, and, and we looked, I mean, Tanner Horror was talking about last night in that final huddle um, right as the game ended. You know, they looked at the schedule at the beginning of the year, and they thought 9-0 and was a possibility, but it was a matter of them believing in themselves and at the end of the day getting the job done, and they did, and they were the first team since 1989 to get the job done and prior to that 1989 team, 1954, the last team to go undefeated uh, hey, at Macomb High School. I'm old, but I'm not that old from 1954. I, do, I, I was in high school in 1989. I, that, was, uh, that was actually my sophomore year of high school. So, you know, the Bombers have had really good teams. But you, you think, well, they're kind of in West Central Illinois, and the Bombers are the big school. They should, they should win more games. Here's the f thing, folks. In the years past... They played as tough a schedule as anybody in the state. I mean, with the teams at Rock Ridge and, and, and Monmouth and uh, Farmington and Knoxville and Q&D and all those teams, mm -hmm. it was a tough schedule. So they might start 0-2 and, and then end up 6-3 and or 7-2 and, and make the playoffs and then make a run. These guys this year going in a little bit different, but I almost feel like this year, they're, even though they're 9-0, they just nobody thinks that they're that good. I agree, and, and they are such an under, underestimated team going into this Week 10 ball game. I think that they ha you know, they're playing still with something to prove. They have something to prove. I think they were a little disappointed last year when they went to Murfreesboro, lost that game, but I, they are hungry this year to get the job done and likely at home, and I tell you what, Winning a playoff game is huge, but winning a playoff game at home is even better feeling yeah, to, uh, going into week 11 after that. You know, and I, and I told Tegan Perry has done all the games with us this year, and I told Tegan, I said, after the game while we were still live last night, I said, you know what, you know, Tegan's like, I wish we could have done this last year, you know. And I said, here's the thing, you know, you're still you, I, we're all some part of this whole deal. Because mm -hmm. when people go back and look at this, they're going to see your broadcast and our broadcast, and they're going to see the, what this team did. And I said, Tegan, as you continue to do this through the years, you're going to become attached to these teams. You're going to learn to love these kids like they're like yours almost, you know, and you're going to become a part of it. Even though you're not on the team, you feel the emotions of these teams, and it's, it's completely, I don't know, I don't know if I say unnecessary or unexpected, but you just become, what, no matter how unbiased you try to be, you just your feelings can't stay unbiased. I 100 percent agree, and you know you grow up in the gym. I mean, my dad's coached for so many years, and, and you really do. You I mean these teams feel like family, and I mean I'm just excited as these athletes are just over here are. I mean we're it's 7:35 now. It's a little under a half hour away from the actual playoff show getting underway, and boy, it's going to be a special night when these uh, when this squad finds out who they take on in just a little bit. And you know the the. <laughs> The worst thing about that is, is you know, if you're, uh, I don't know, I'm going to throw up Brown County, you're 1A. So you're probably going to find out really fast, right? And I've seen in years where they start with 8A and go to 1A, and some years they go 1A. Most years they go 1A, but I've seen them start 8A. 
But at any rate, so if you're a small school, you find out really quick. If you're an 8A school, you find out way later. But even these guys, they're going to watch a whole bunch of teams find out their fate before they do. And they're, the, all these kids, we'll show them to you a little later, they're all lined up, circled around the TV. It's, it's not like that you don't know if you're going to make it. You know, it's not that kind of thing. It's not like an NCAA mm -hmm. tournament where, oh, I'm on the bubble. I might or I might not make it or whatever. They know they're in, but it's still that excitement of not knowing who you're playing, where you're playing, where you're seated. There's so many unknowns still. Absolutely. And that last game of the season just got done at 6.20 tonight. We learned that. Uh, the IHSA did send an email out that, you know, things would kind of be delayed a little bit. Uh, 6.20, the last high school game got over. So, I mean, you talk about those two teams on the field still at 6.30 or 6.20, 6.30 tonight, uh, finding out, it, you know, a winner-take-all game, getting into the playoffs. And, I mean, it's just it's the anxious, it's the excitement of the kids now. Like you said, it's not like NCAA. These, or these kids know that they are in uh, with the 9-0 record. But, you know, you don't know who you're playing, and that just adds to the excitement of uh, that announcement coming about 8.15, 8.30 tonight. With that 6.20 game, though, Justice, Somebody was sitting around somewhere saying, are we in or are we out? Absolutely. Whether it be the team's playing and somebody else. You know, there's somebody else that if this team loses, I'm in. If that team wins, I'm out. So they're just sitting on the edge of their seat. They don't get to watch the TV show later to know. They're at 620. They're like, oh. Or they're like, yes. And then they have it all over again in another hour and a half when they find out who they're playing. Absolutely. And, you know, that's the great thing here. You know, you, you can, like we said there, you can win at 630, <laughs> be on not, uh, uh, the top of, top of the earth basically, <laughs> be celebrating, and then you really got to refocus really quick and uh, yeah. um, focus on who you have to play the following week. The Bombers were lucky. You know, they played Friday night. They had time to celebrate, enjoy it. And then they kind of get today to relax, take catch their breath, and then refocus on next week's game. You know, and that, that team, they're celebrating because they're in. But if you're that close to being in, you're five and four or whatever. So then you're like, okay, now, oh, I'm, I'm going to play Mount Carmel or Chicago Hope or something that's nine and zero. Oh, you know, so you go from yes, I'm in to holy crap, we got our work cut out for mm -hmm. us. You know, and that's that's the thing that you know somebody's going to look at the Bombers at nine and zero. Oh, and say, we've got our work cut out for us. The Bombers, like you said, though, I think go into tonight saying, you know what, we're going to be 9-0. and We're going to be an upper echelon seed. But whoever comes here thinks they can beat us because we haven't played anybody. Absolutely. And, and these kids will play for that next week. A little bit of a chip on your shoulder. Right. You know, going into next week's game, you know, sure, the other team can look at it 9-0. and but like you said, you know, they haven't played anybody. That's, that's the phrase that uh, this team's been associated with. And, boy, do, well, you know, there will be that chip on their shoulder saying, you know, we have something to prove. It's a playoff game. It's a home playoff game, likely. And uh, it just adds to the excitement uh, next week. Well, I'll, you know, I'm going to point out, they, they say they haven't played anybody. They played and really dismantled three playoff teams, Farmington, Elmwood, Brimfield, and Rova. Rova's going to make the playoffs. It looks like at five and four. Illini West went into the last game of the season, a chance to make the playoffs at four and four. Havana went into the last yep. night of the season, four and four. So, I mean, you can say whatever you want to, but there's three defeats of playoff teams and two other teams that were one win away from getting there. Absolutely. And, and I mean, I saw Illini West. They did a lot of good things last night early in that ball game mm -hmm. that, you know, should have they got down and scored? Man. Yeah. I mean, but that first drive, if that first drive for Illini West would have been ended in a touchdown instead of seven minutes or eight minutes off the clock and nothing, that game could have been completely different. It absolutely but, could have. But the Bombers' defense – was the difference, and 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 that's what we need to talk about it tonight, right? Is Absolutely. Everybody talks about J.T. Jeter and Langdon Allen and Jack Duncan and all the records they're setting, but this Bombers defense might be the key to this whole deal. It absolutely will be, and you know we'll hear from some players later in the show tonight. But this Bombers defense, you know, it, it's been unstoppable all year. And I mean, they shut out Illini West, they shut out West Hancock um, during homecoming a few weeks back, you know, and they're limiting these teams to hardly any points, and they're getting the job done when they absolutely have to. Well, and last night, props to the sophomores, right? They come in, Illini West still playing their starters. Mm -hmm. They drove down the field, but they got the stop. They did. I mean, 
so the points, most all the points except Elmwood Brimfield and one touchdown from Havana, I think, was pretty much all scored against the second string defense. However, the second string defense also held a lot of people out of the end zone because they played a lot this year. Yeah, they did. And, you know, that, that time when the JV team goes in, that's a great time. You know, not only are you getting those younger kids experience for next year because, you know, you got a great group of seniors here that are going to graduate, but, you know, they made the stops, you know, against their varsity squad. And it wasn't necessarily easy. Illini West did get downfield, and you're thinking, mm, are they going to score? But the Bombers stepped up, those younger kids stepped up, and they, they did what they had to, and they, uh, they got the stop, gave the Bombers back the ball, and secured the uh, 9 0 berth. Well, we're going to take our first break of the night. Tegan Perry, who has done all the games on TSSR Game Time Live this year. He's actually done all of them. I actually missed one. So Tegan has done every one of them. We'll have him on for his first first opportunity to be on camera. I don't think he's been on camera. He's been on uh, voice-wise, but I don't know if he's been on camera all season. So you're a little more used to that. Yep. Should, we, should we give Tegan any hints? when we're off air or do you think you just let him flop on here and see what happens let him flop on here yeah that sounds like more fun <laughs> so justice keen i'm Dwayne hewlett we'll be right back here on tssr game time live presented by mdh with the bomber playoff watch party in just a few minutes i chose the mdh OBGYN group uh, because i've heard wonderful things about dr smith um, and upon entering the office i i really got along with everybody and got a warm feeling the staff is warm and inviting and welcoming. It's a small community, so it's a really nice uh, hospital to have here in the rural area. I continue to choose MDH because of the relationships I have. I really enjoy everybody here. At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. Welcome back to TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. As we have coverage of the Macomb Bombers watch party. Tegan Perry is alongside tonight here. And Tegan, you've been here all season long for the games. Now you're here for the fun of finding out where this 9-0 football team is going to end up in the playoffs. Yeah, uh, we were able to do this last year as well, and it was a really interesting and fun experience. And I'm actually glad that I'm able to be back here again and doing this has really shown me that you know even if i'm not on the field i can still make an impact uh doing stuff like this so yeah i'm really excited to be here well it's your first foray into broadcasting uh, you told me at the first game that your soccer game i think it was actually wasn't it was it a soccer match yeah it was soccer match. yeah soccer you wanted to try it i said bring it let's do it and uh, i think it's been a fun experience you've gotten better every week what's what's your best memory about watching this bombers team this year uh, my best memory would probably either be from Friday due to more recency bias because going 9-0 and is a very rare accomplishment, and not a lot of people can do it. But uh, if we're talking like later on in the season, it would definitely be the Farmington win. As we went up against them last year, uh, we did not have our greatest performance doing that. But them going into that year, winning 58-7, to a win that, like Coach Weston said in our previous broadcast, um, if you replay that a hundred times, that score doesn't happen again. Yeah, and, that, and that's one of the things that I think, I think, I mean, I'm not 100% positive, but I believe that is a game that if you played that game ten times, you would never have that outcome again. Yeah, that just shows how good this Macomb team has gone throughout this entire season. At first, people thought the expectation was six and three, five and four, and make the playoffs and see if you can make a splash. But going undefeated and being able to make such an impact that now you might be a four-seeded team, a three-seeded team, like that is a huge accomplishment for some of these guys. Well, I know for you, I saw you mingling with a lot of the players. Obviously, you're one year removed, right, from playing 
a different side of the coin, so to speak. But we talked about last night during our broadcast that you know you're you're still a part of this, right? It's still even though you're not on the team and you're not actually part of the team, seeing them every week and, and being involved and, and watching them succeed gives you some some pleasure too and makes you feel like you're part doing something that's special too, doesn't it? Yeah, it does because I feel like uh, us doing this really gives a lot of the motivation to the players and uh, just to hear their name on there uh, is a little bit more extra bit to the sweetener of playing to football and for them this is this is something that they love to hear. They love hearing you speak. They love hearing uh, Coach Weston speak. They love hearing me speak. It's just it's all about them, and I'm glad that I'm able to go out there and provide an impact. As we move forward now, and, and, and we're into the postseason, a team that I still think is underrated. I mean, even though they're nine and zero, I still think I feel like they're underrated. What's your thought as they move into this week ten? You have to kind of qual the mo- emotions of being nine and zero, while kind of using the emotions of being 9 I mean, there's a, there's a, has to be a fine line there somewhere, right? Yeah, there has to be. And uh, one way that I think these te- this team should use it is they should look at last year. Last year, they went up against Murfreesboro. That didn't go way too well. And use that as motivation along with that 9 no push to be like, you know what? We're just as good as all the other teams around us. We can go there. We can make it all the way to the state. And everyone on this on this team knows that they can and while other people may not think that this team knows that and they've known like we said yesterday that they knew that they could be nine and oh so if they think that they can make it all the way to state then i firmly believe it that they can well it's it's cool to see these kids and and it's hard sometimes to live up to expectations right i mean there was a lot of uh there was a lot of expectations for certain members of these kids, right? Or certain kids of members of this team. I think you can safely say that they've lived up to those expectations. I don't think so. For the, these kids, these expectations is perfection. They don't think they've reached the expectation. They've reached the bare minimum. They're not expecting the bare minimum. They're expecting 100%. Well, and, and that's very possible. I know that Keith Yex was on WCAZ last night, and I talked to him before the game. And, and we talked, you know, I don't know we talked about this a whole lot last night, but we talked about last night's game. Are the Bombers pressure more under more pressure to go 9-0, and or are, is Illini West under more pressure just to try to make the playoffs? He said all the pressure was on the Bombers because expectations said they should be 9-0. and I felt like the pressure is on Illini West at that point because they need to make the playoffs. I mean, the Bombers win or lose, they're going to the playoffs and they can still make that splash you talked about. Alana West season's over now. What was your take on that? you think it's maybe individually how the kids perceive it or the team perceives it? Uh, that's kind of hard to really answer because they're both two different sides of the same spectrum. Um, on Alana West side, yeah, you have to win to make it into the playoffs, but you can't really compare that pressure to McComb, who as a team has not been the greatest so far this is their second winning season over i think the past seven or eight years they have not been that great of a team so going into this there's also a lot of expectations for the future as well so it's kind of a really it's really hard because on one hand you're talking about in the moment pressure and on the other it's long term yeah building a program right i mean the bombers as you said had struggled for a few recent years up until last year so this is the group. If this if this program leaps now under Coach Horrell and the staff and it leaps forward and it stays here where it's at, this group is the one that did that. Yeah, that's true, and that's something that these kids are really going to look back on and be like, you know what, regardless of how it went, I'm glad that I was able to be a part of something that helped started it. And the reason why I know is that I'm one of those people right now. I started uh, Coach Horrell's first year. I gone through all the aches and pains. I gone through every single thing through the first year, and to see the kids go out there and be able to play to what those guys over there think, it's really special. It's really glad that I was able to help make this all happen. 
Well, we're still trying to get the okay to do the playoff games. We will have to sell some more sponsorship if we're able to do that. It's a pretty cashy, especially the farther we go along. But if you are watching and you want to be a part of that, we will have some sponsorship packages available starting tomorrow. If you're here and uh, tonight and you're listening, you can stop us at some point, and uh, we'll work on that. Tegan, thank you for everything you've done. I'm sure that we'll do at least one more of these games, so be ready to go this weekend. And uh, I thank you for everything. And, and what's, your, what's your prediction? Uh, my prediction? No, no, don't, I don't want to know what your prediction is of who you're going to play. I want to know what's your prediction. How many rounds? How many rounds? Um, if these kids think they can go all the way to the state, I have trust that they'll go all the way to state. Oh, there you go. That's what we're talking about. All right, we're going to take another break, get Justice Keen back here with me, and we'll bring a player in as well, maybe Ethan Ladd here and when we come back from the break you're watching tssr game time live presented by mdh after my appointment that day i just made up my mind that i'm gonna have my baby here in my home <laughs> and this hospital because irrespective of where you're from who you are it's just their line of duty to make sure they give care make you comfortable i told them about the staff of mdh you know they are they're all good you get all the support you need this is just the best place for you and your family. In a small community like ours, shopping locally can make a big difference. Did you know you can shop locally for your home internet? While you're powering your devices with super fast fiber internet, you also get to be a part of something bigger than yourself. Every dollar you spend on our services goes to making our town a better place to live, work, and play. You're helping us support local education, build a stronger sense of community, and keep money right here in our local economy. Thank you for choosing your local internet provider. We're proud to keep you connected. After my appointment that day, I just made up my mind that I'm gonna have my baby here in my home <laughs> and this hospital because irrespective of where you're from, who you are. It's just their line of duty to make sure they give care, make you comfortable. I told them about the staff of MDH, you know, they are, they are all good you need. This is just the best place for you and your family. Network's exclusive presentation of the playoff pairing show as the Bombers await to find out who they will take on in week number 10. Ethan Ladd is alongside me. And uh, how, how are we feeling tonight? It's, it's playoff night, and you find out who you take on next week in just a little bit. You know, it's an exciting night. You know, we've been waiting for this a long time. You know, like after week seven, you know, we clinched playoff spot, and we were just excited to see who we were, who we were going to play. So it's an exciting night for sure. Let's talk a little bit about last night's game. The Bombers took on the Chargers, did defeat them 46-0. A little bit of a shaky start, but you guys regrouped and got it together and really uh, came out strong there um, after that first little bit. Yeah, shaky start for sure, but we definitely did get it together. And, you know, moving forward, we have some things to work on, but we definitely need to work on starting off a little stronger. Hold on. All right, we do have a uh, internet connection issue here. We're going to pause here really quick and come back. We'll have Ethan Ladd back with us here momentarily. We'll be back after this short break on TSSR's Game Time Live and the Bomber Sports Network's presentation. Uh, I see acute injuries on the field. Uh, I see uh, ankle sprains. I see ACL knee injuries, as well as in the clinic. It's very rewarding to see them from on the field injury to rehab to transition back to their event. Welcome back to uh, TSSR Game Time Live and the Bomber Sports Network's presentation of Playoff Pairings Night after a quick little technical error. Uh, we're back with Ethan Ladd. Let's talk a little bit about this playoff game here. When we're putting together the game, are you more of an afternoon favor or are you more of an evening favor um, when you're talking uh, playoff game? Because obviously that is an option that will be discussed tonight. We don't know anything yet, but are, are you more, do you favor the afternoon game or the evening? Uh, you know, I I definitely favor the the later game. You know, I think the atmosphere would be a lot better for sure. So yeah, I think I'd favor the later. Game. All right, 
We're going to have, I think, Coach Ladd come in here momentarily as well, talk to you guys too. Coach, you want to slide on in? Make room for everybody. Get the camera adjusted. All right, there we go. Coach, good to have you with us tonight. Uh, talk a little bit about last night's game and uh, recap the season a little bit, and then we'll uh, talk a little bit about playoff pairings tonight as well. Uh, let see. Last night was, uh, was one of those nights where we were kind of hoping that, uh, that everything would go our way. That first drive, we really didn't know what to expect. Um, kind of got some jitters out of the way, but then uh, – and then we got everything figured out after us last year. Definitely left a, a bad taste in your mouth. Absolutely. And so you want to you want to come back out and, and show that we belong. All right, guys. We appreciate you hopping on here. We'll let you go. We'll let you kind of watch the uh, pregame show. It's good to have you with us. And uh, playoff pairings night continues here at the MHS uh, party. Thanks, guys. I went through MDH when we were trying to get pregnant. We were struggling the first year, and then when we got pregnant, I stayed at MDH and through labor and now for pediatrics. My experience was nothing short of phenomenal. I was met with amazing staff members who helped me through concerns that I had when she was first born, helping me learn how to be a new mom. It was really reassuring and comforting knowing that I had so much support and kindness around me. My entire pregnancy at MDH was amazing. MTC Communications is building a high-speed fiber network in our community, and we're putting priority on the areas with the greatest interest. That means we need your input to let us know you want us to build fiber in your area first. Experience the speed and convenience of fiber internet by visiting our special website and registering. Let us know you want fiber internet today, and make your voice heard. At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential, with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. And welcome back, and uh, we're going to have to refine the camera here. We're locked up for a second, folks. Just bear with us. It's, I won't say it was Ethan, but it might have been Ethan that uh, ran through after his interview. He was so excited to uh, do the interview that he ran through and uh, unplugged the camera. So we're... There it is. Look at that. It's working. There we go. I got Jack Duncan beside me now. And uh, Jack, you've been here before. It feels like deja vu. You did an interview not too long ago with, with yep. me. Yep, that's right. A couple Wednesdays ago. So we're uh, going to get Justice Keen back under here with you in a minute as well as we had a few technical problems. And there's Justice coming in to save the day. And Justice, uh, I know I've talked to Jack. We, we did a nice interview a few weeks ago. Let's, so let's start the uh, the tough questions off from you. 9-0 uh, going into next week, and uh, I was talking to Ethan a little bit. I kind of talked about, you know, there's a little bit of, you know, you guys lost last year at Murfreesboro. That was a tough defeat. Is there, you know, I asked Ethan this, is there a chip on your shoulder going into this year? Oh, bit? absolutely. I mean, last year we, d we ended our season with a bad taste in our mouth, and, uh, you know, it's been hard not to look forward to the first playoff game, and now that it's finally here, I think we'll be ready to go. What was it like, uh, you know, last week, or last night, rather, was your first time playing on the Carthage field. Your dad was a Carthage alumni, really good football player. What was that kind of like, getting to play on the same field your dad did uh, back in the day last night? Oh, yeah, that was pretty cool. I mean, I, my dad always talks about how good they were and how good the Blue Boys were, so it was pretty cool <laughs> to play on that field. and. I, I can tell it. I can uh, I can vouch for him. The Blue Boys were pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it was pretty I'm good to, to beat him pretty good. Matter of fact, I did run into Jim Unruh today. Did you up at the homecoming parade? He was in the house for it. So good to see him too. Jim Unruh, the coach of the Blue Boys for a long, long time. So, and I I would imagine your dad's coach too. So yep. he was uh, a f Hall of Famer for sure. And you guys. Speaking of Hall of Famers, if Macomb High had a Hall of Fame, you broke a record of a Hall of Famer, right? 
Yeah, I did. <laughs> Phil Bradley. So how how was uh, how was that? It's pretty cool. I mean, Phil Bradley's. Uh, if you go to Macomb, you know who Phil Bradley is, and it was it was an honor to break one of his records. Well, I've Justice and I talked about this earlier. I think we both agree, Justice and I both agree that you guys still feel a little undervalued. I mean, we feel like you're a little undervalued. You guys aren't getting maybe the respect a nine and zero team should get. Is that a positive or a negative going into this week? Uh, I think it's a positive. I mean, yeah, we're nine and zero, but we know we're not playing four or five A schools. But you know, I think that that gives us a chip on our shoulder because it's playoff time and it's time to go. I I did ask this to Ethan, and we don't know anything yet. Obviously, high prediction of the home game next week. I asked Ethan this, and I'll ask you: Are you more? Of, do you favor the evening game, or do you favor the afternoon one o'clock earlier start? Yeah, I mean, I've only played one afternoon game, and that was last year at Murfreesboro. But I like I like playing under the lights, and I I think we might be playing under the lights Saturday, so we'll see. But I, I I'm a under the lights guy. All righty. Yeah, Friday, Friday night lights, right? That's that's yeah. what. It, but if it's Saturday, it won't be under the. That, now, I just say justice. Is it Friday night or Saturday afternoon, or can you play Saturday night? You can play either. It you just can play has either. to. Be, yeah, I think it, it's either. You just have to pick between one o'clock or seven for the kickoff time. So, so either or. So you have a. I, I've never. I've covered playoff football for a long time, and I, I won't even age myself, but longer than you two have been alive, and. I've never seen a Saturday night playoff game outside of championships. So it doesn't happen very often. So if you guys play a Saturday night game underneath the lights, you will be be the first time in a you'll be the you'll be the one everybody in the state will be watching. Yeah. Is that what you want? Yeah, I guess pretty that, cool. that's pretty yeah. cool, huh? Yeah. Well, I guess uh, you can see how that happens, but talk about your guys you toss the ball to. Oh yeah, I mean everybody knows it. JT Langdon um Jaden, you know, we I got guys to throw the ball and they can they can go get it. So I don't have to make the perfect throw, and it, and it feels good to have those guys that have my back when the ball's in the air to go get it. Yeah, you know, that's certainly really good confidence to have. I mean, you know, it, it really just seems like you're connected with them on the field. You know that you know they feel confident in you, and obviously you have the confidence in them. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Now, now <laughs> you're walking down the hallways at school. Justice tosses you a football. If you toss one at JT or Jaden, will they catch it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? JT or Jaden, will they catch a football? In the hallway at school, if Justice was walking down and tossed you a football, it said Mac or Bomber Sport Network on it, and you just said, hey, catch, and you tossed it without any real warning, would they catch it? Yes. Think 100%. so? So if we tested that next week? Yeah. I, th I, think, I think we'll test it. I think. Monday morning. Yeah, I think we should test that. But we shouldn't tell JT or any of those no. guys. No. You're the only one that can know. All right. Does that sound like a yeah, plan? Sounds I'm good. I'm sure nobody – they're not going to watch this, so they won't have any idea. Yeah. So parents or anybody else watching, don't tell those guys that this is going to happen. All right. We'll see if we can make it happen. We'll see. Can you get a sticker to put on a football? Yeah. Okay. Well, make there you it go. happen. We can, <laughs> just, just can make it happen. And I want video of it. Somebody get your phone out. Yeah. Okay. We'll, get, so, we'll make sure it happens. Well, Jack – I know that your parents are huge supporters of you. Mm -hmm. uh, your siblings are too. You got a little brother, I think, that kind of looks up to you a little bit. Yeah, I do. It's it's pretty cool to see him running around uh, with my jersey on, and I know uh, he looks up to me. At, like if I had an older brother at that age, I know I'd look up to him. So, you know, it's pretty cool to set the example for somebody so close to me. Well, it, it sounds like a little bit. I think Justice is kind of in the same boat. You guys are kind of like stars at, at Macomb <laughs> High and around Macomb. Coach Horrell told me his his little boy just like almost worships your oh, yeah. ground, the I ground love, you walk on. I love Jax. Jax is cute. I love Jax. So what's that like? I mean, this team, is, have you noticed that maybe more people know you? I know Justice sees this because people notice him around the community. Have more people started noticing you around the community and say, hey, that's that Duncan kid. He can he can throw a football a little bit. Uh, I mean, I've had some – some people like in public say like hey nice game friday which and i hadn't really talked to you before you know playing football so that's that's pretty cool and yeah it's it's pretty cool to to have people that to reach out because of football so yeah well to, uh, they're going to reach out in a few minutes they're still over there struggling with the tv screen though Do yeah i think internet wi internet and wi-fi has been an issue here tonight we have great internet downstairs but we're kind of out the the limit <laughs> of the of the inter wireless internet, and I think that's what the problem is. I actually switched 
back to my phone, and I think that's where we're why we're good now. But yep. you know, that's that's one of the things. Justice understands that's one of the things with this whole deal is internet. Is it? I mean, for me, it's. It, I wish I was you because I could just go out there and play football. I don't have to think about nothing. <laughs> just drop back and loft it up, and these guys are going to run under it and catch it all the time. I mean, you don't even have to think out there, do you? I mean, not much. And you know, I got <laughs> the guys out there that would make the plays, but when my line blocks as good as uh, they have, it makes it even easier. So now, one thing is, I heard somebody say it might have been Coach Weston talking about your freshman year they thought you might be a running quarterback and uh it almost looks like you don't like to run anymore i mean i'll, I'll run but when i got athletes that i can throw it over the top to i'm always <laughs> looking to throw when i get out of the pocket but i don't mind running you think justice could be a tight end for you i don't know i've never seen him uh i've never seen him out there only in like a suit and tie or some golf stuff so i'd like to see it though hey well i'm what i'm thinking you guys you guys did the uh the ESPN skit, right? Yeah. You were part of that. Yeah. You guys did that for justice. I think justice should <laughs> I think should so. play a should play a practice or I something so. with you guys. I think he should. I, think I he mean should. that sounds fair to I me. Think he should play some football next year. Flag football t- get, maybe have a flag football game at the end of the year. So right. at, at the very least. <laughs> and and make justice be the quarterback. Okay. Yeah. Justice you in for that? Sure. We'll video it. We'll 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 stream it live if we can make <laughs> this happen. <laughs> that, that's, uh, justice looks a little nervous right now. He, he's a golfer, though, man. I mean, he, yeah, he, he can swing it. He can, if, if we – maybe we should do – put the football – have you seen those videos where they put ball, footballs on tees and stuff and hit them with golf clubs? Uh, yeah. Ball, yeah, ball sports, whatever, yeah. yeah. Could you could you do something like that? Sure. I, I'd that? probably be a little more confident in that than a flag football. Well, we'll let's, let's figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll, Make it more comfortable for you. How about that? Sure. We'll figure out some some sport we can make Jack throw passes and you hit golf balls and we'll we'll have some competition. There we go. Are you game uh, for that? Yeah, I'll do that. That sounds fun. <laughs> okay, I just throw people under the under the <laughs> bus all the time. If you folks haven't been wa- wondering yet, uh, if you haven't watched enough of our games to know that I just do that to people. Hey, Justice, you're looking at your watch. It's ten after. How it close is. do you think we are? Uh, I think I think we're within probably fifteen twenty minutes of. Do you have any way to pull it up on your computer? Yeah. You think? Yeah, yeah. Because they still are struggling with the uh, TV to our left. Uh, okay, your mom and dad are both over there. Which one is more tech savvy? Well, I would I would probably say my mom, but she tends to panic under pressure. <laughs> so we're me and my dad are over there trying to figure it out. She's all worried that we're not going to get it in time. But I, I used to work with Lindsay, and I'm going to say that he is not the one I want working on no. my tech stuff. No, I, w- I would agree. So I'm, I'm thinking that that's a that might be a tough scenario over there. Yeah. So, uh, who, uh, if if there's some sneak going around, don't say it. But who, if you could pick a team that you could play in the playoffs, is there a team that you'd like another shot at? Or, um, or I, it would be cool to to play Murfreesboro again, get another shot at them. But I mean, we're gonna be ready for whoever we play, and we're just excited to be in. All right, Justice. So you want me to stop? Shut, you want me to shut up now and <laughs> let him go and and move on to something else? Or are you at a place where you can talk a little bit about what's going on? I don't think. Uh, have they released anything on the IHSA? No. Dot org yet? No, nope, they've not, not yet, left. Not released anything yet. So, I, I I have a feeling they may not release anything there until everything's released. Oh, yeah. So, hopefully we can get it pulled up and <laughs> we can get some official verbiage here in a little bit. Jack, thanks for. Just let yeah, me ramble for you. a few minutes. All yeah. right. Appreciate it. Right. I don't know. It just stopped working. The internet is down. I know. I'm on the phone with them. No, that was my wife. I can't get online again. Yeah, I'm just telling. I'm talking to Evan. He's no, my the- daughter, my wife. Okay, can you guys not talk? Sorry. Yes, we have white. Yes, the white boxes. I see one. They got horns on them. The one with they the have horns. horns. Like, t- yes, I see one. We have 11 of those. I was on the phone and I got disconnected. Okay, it's not about you. We switched our broadband service provider. Like he put, Devin put in 11, Evan. How are we supposed to know which one's seven and which one? I thought one? it was Devin. Who's Devin? I got no service. Honey, you're blocking. You can't stand there. You're blocking it. Don't block it. And the best part, I never have to speak to Evan or Devin ever again. I think this one's 11. 11? We're not looking for 11. No, we're looking for, are we looking for seven, Evan, or 11? We have two next to each other. That's bad. Two white boxes. Evan? Evan. I chose MDH. Uh, We moved here and I was researching different places that would 
allow me to VBAC, um, uh, have a vaginal birth after C-section, and the doctors here do encourage that, and so. Well, we, we are aware now that the 1A pairings have been released. I'll go through this list really quick. A 16 seed Chicago Richards will take on Lena Winslow. Stark County will take on uh, Mid-County Co-op. Aurora Christian at 5-4 and four will take on 4 seeded Fulton at 7-2. and two. Rockford Lutheran 5-4 and four will take on Anawan Weathersfield. A 5 seed Corliss at 5-4 and four will take on Hope Academy undefeated. Forreston will take on Peru. Morrison in Ottawa, Dakota, Calhoun, Greenfield, and Rushville and Cumberland will be round out the 1A pairings. We are now aware that those have been released on the IHSA television network. We continue to wait as the uh, parents continue to work on the TV screen over there as uh, the Internet has been an issue tonight. But uh, local teams-wise, Rushville gets in at the bottom 6-3. Uh, and three. They really did turn it around after some early... Uh, early faults in their uh, season is that <laughs> in case you're wondering <laughs> people are going to wonder what what just happened there I'm not I and I don't know that it's actually internet issues and well they've made it official Seven o'clock. So we can now confirm the viewers' live breaking news. The IHSA has released that the Macomb Bombers will take on QND seven o'clock next Saturday. Tanner Horrell is addressing the crowd in the room. Yeah, it uh, snuck up on us with this. Normal practice time. And Coach Horrell says be ready to go. There is a applause in the room, and the Bombers will begin there. You also get to be a part of something bigger than yourself. Every dollar you spend on our services goes to making our town a better place to live, work, and play. You're helping us support local education, build a stronger sense of community, and keep money right here in our local economy. Thank you for choosing your local internet provider. We're proud to keep you connected. I went through MDH when we were trying to get pregnant. We were struggling the first year, and then when we got pregnant, I stayed at MDH and through labor and now for pediatrics. My experience was nothing short of phenomenal. I met, was met with amazing staff members who helped me through concerns that I had when she was first born, helping me learn how to be a new mom. It was really reassuring and comforting knowing that I had so much support and kindness around me. My entire pregnancy at MDH was amazing. Okay, I'm going to play these highlights since they got cut off. Uh, it seems to be working. I'm going to adjust our settings a little bit to try to need less internet.
we confirmed it for you. stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. MTC Communications is building a high-speed fiber network in our community, and we're putting priority on the areas with the greatest interest. That means we need your input to let us know you want us to build fiber in your area first. Experience the speed and convenience of fiber internet by visiting our special